what it is about this story that you find most inspiring, yeah. the Sikh Sikh world around story? Any, any order, I don't mind if you, you say skip and come back to you, but you can answer only. Oh, yeah. Most inspiring? I wouldn't say most inspiring, I'd say. Well, in that case, I'll answer it that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd say it's interesting because yeah. um, for a country to be in another country and then um, the, the one that, the country that you've invaded has been yeah. and said, oh, okay, look. So this, 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 this incredible story of Sikhs fighting for an occupier in a war that has nothing to do with them, with in a land that they've never been to and never even heard of, right? That's an incredible story, and that's something that people will find interesting, for sure. And um, for me, I think, is the coverage by the French newspapers. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, fine. especially when you go to Europe, that lot of people know about Sikhs. Yeah, yeah. Seeing, the contrast, isn't it? Yeah, the contrast now. Yeah, yeah it, when they turned up in France, they were regarded as the saviours. The Sikhs were part of an Indian army that went to France that basically saved the front line. The British sector was badly breached. They basically blocked it and um, changed the course of history. Um, and the French at the time regarded the dusky warriors from the east as their saviours. So that, that reputation, that goodwill no longer exists. It's, not, it's unknown in Europe and France. Um, good man? Just that it ties into like, current events. Kind of, you see Iraq and Syria in the war, mm. and you like, just wonder how, how one point Mr. Singh was running around Mesopotamia. <laughs> Making history, eh? Making history, yeah. When I've been in Brighton, I've had loads of um, veterans come and speak. You studied there, do you? Yeah, I used, okay. I've just finished. And then they used to come and speak to me and be like, oh, you're Sikh, because you see my colour, and they'd right, be like, right. oh, you're Sikh, so, you know, um, we fought with loads of your, you know, ancestors, blah, 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 and I knew nothing of it, so I was kind of like, because I've done World War through school for the whole time, but I've never been taught this, obviously, we, we were taught this side of it, but I find it very interesting that this whole other side of World War exists that I never have been introduced to, so this is, this is like amazing, Ch it's almost a chance for me to learn as well. Excellent, excellent, that's, that's, that's the way it should be, and the, the thing you've hit upon there is, that this story is um, the bit of the it, it, it's, it's our opportunity to tell the complete story of the world war yeah. it's missing a massive chunk because if you look at the numbers I think about 8 million service personnel in total in um, World War One from the Allied side um, the, the troops are from Australia, New Zealand um, Canada and white South Africa total 1.4 million quite a lot India gave 1.4 million. It's the origins of the Sikh movement, the philosophy, whatever you want to say it, uh, how it gave rise to an empire, and then that empire crumbles following a battle with the British, the encounter, and then it's the uh, Sikhs working for the British as part of their empire um, and being involved in all sorts of military campaigns around the world during Queen Victoria's time. And then you get into the 1900s and the war begins. And that's your kind of entry point into section two where the story begins there. You can spend your own time looking at this and getting, getting your own story out of it. This material is reflected here. We've got some wonderful objects to do with uh, Sikh Gurus and Runjit Singh's empire and the relationship during the Victorian era, Sikhs in the military. Where did the interaction begin? It was the soldier, the German trooper in the front line, talking to the Indian trooper. And if you look at this, this wonderful um, sheet here, these are some of the phrases that the Germans were uh, told to shout out across the trenches to Indian troops. Can you read some of them? It's, it's transliterated in, in uh, Hindustani, so Urdu, and it's also in German. And can I read a few? Can you, can you anyone read? Huh? Yeah, look at, look at the, the, the... Oh, not the German. We're not in Germany. I don't think it's... Look, look, it says, Juanno, edder hamare pasao. So, you know, private. Come this way. Come to me. Yeah. Come over here. Hard to tell. Raise your arms. Hathiar Finko. Drop your weapons. Yeah, come this way. What about this one? They're given times, different times. Um, these portraits, we've got all the names of the artists. Three of them are named sitters. Lal Singh, who happens to be from my village, funnily enough. Uh, Sardara Singh and uh, uh, Sundar Singh.
And this guy, we don't know his name, but we know the name of the artist. This is a very famous French artist, Lucien Jonas. He's here in uh, one of the camps in Flanders, surrounded by Sikh soldiers, with his easel and painting a picture. And if you look, it looks like he's drawing a cavalryman. And we found this charcoal, charcoal sketch of his, of an Indian cavalryman, of a Sikh cavalryman, in fact. So it's like that. And then you've got this final bit here, which is the portrayals and caricatures, Sikhs turning up in comics that the English kids were reading. Sinjin the Sikh. <laughs> and he's got this wonderful line, and he's with Cuffy the Colonial, probably Australian. And look at this, this is Sinjin. We won't rob the general of his sauce, he chortled. No, give him plenty of that stuff, grinned Sinjin. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's great. And it's a silly little story, but there you go. And on the other side, the German kids were being subjected to this sort of propaganda. <laughs> right, you know, Sikh, the ferocious Sikh being the, the, the enemies. This is a book called Our Enemies for Children. An answering poem. It, it encapsulates the whole story. It's, it's told through uh, a Sikh soldier who returns after the war, goes to his village, and starts telling the kids what he experienced. And it touches upon all sorts of uh, experiences and, and, uh, during the war and before. Cool. Right? So now you know your way around. It's not that big. Right? But there's a lot of stuff in here. We covered every single inch of the wall, and there's lots of objects.